Greetings again, my AP Calculus BC friends. Mr. Record here from Avon High School, and we're going to take a look at our sixth video in the topic 6.13, all about improper integrals. And this is our first example where we don't have infinity as a boundary, but instead a discontinuity, or what we call sometimes an infinite discontinuity. So let's take a look at this one. The problem that we're going to do, if I scroll down, is going to be the definite integral from 0 to 1 of essentially 1 over the cubed root of x with respect to x. Now, what I want you all to notice is that this is not your normal run-of-the-mill definite integral that you could probably encounter in a calculus AB course. And the reason is because this 0 is a bit of a problem. And you want to make sure that you look at that first. You want to make sure that you can identify whether or not the integral that you're trying to solve is improper. And because this 0 does create a discontinuity, we know that we can't have 0 in the denominator. That means we have an improper integral. And moreover, that discontinuity is going to come in the form of a vertical asymptote. Maybe if you remember back a little bit all the way to unit one, when we talked about how we have these uh, uh, non-removable discontinuities in the form of vertical asymptotes whenever the denominator was equal to zero, of course, after everything had canceled. So if I scroll back up here to my blue box that uh, I share with my students about all the different kinds of improper integrals with infinite discontinuities. We see that this falls into the category of, I would probably say, a type 2. That means that we have the lower endpoint, A, that's going to be the problem because the function is certainly continuous on the open A to closed B. And it looks as if we're going to set this up by using a limit again, very similar to what we did in the previous five examples. But you'll notice that this limit is just a bit different. Now, I honestly, I don't care what values you use. I know that this video uses the value C approaches A from the right. And the reason is because I didn't want to get confused because A was already some arbitrary variable type of thing. What I will often do is when I set up my limit, I will actually put an A wherever that C is, and then I will go ahead and use whatever value of A that is in my problem. By and large, it makes no difference what letters of the alphabet you use, but I would again stay away from X. Okay, let's see if we can put this together and make a little bit more sense. So what's happening here in this problem? is we are going to be taking a limit and that limit is going to be set up as I said before using a right because the bottom boundary is our problem so I'm gonna let that a approach zero now listen very carefully because you know that there are two different ways to approach a number you can do so from the left you can do so from the right because the zero is the farthest left boundary of this particular function, the only way that we can approach it is from the right. So you want to make sure that you show the proper notation by putting the little plus sign there. And that's going to be very important. It is something that I do uh, look for on setups for my students in my class. At this stage, you can then go ahead and integrate from a up to 1. And if you don't like the fact that there's a square root or a cubed root, I should say, and the fact that it's in the denominator, you all know that you can change that to a negative 1 third exponent. Radicals don't play nicely with calculus, so we've got that fixed. And so at this stage, we can go ahead and integrate. So we still have a approaching 0 from the right. When we integrate x to the negative 1 third, we would get x to the positive 2 thirds over 2 thirds or multiplied by 3 halves if that looks better. And we would still be integrating from our a up to our 1. What this would lead us to do is still holding off on that limit, not quite ready for him yet. But we can plug in 1 for our x. If we take 1 to the 2 thirds power, we still will get the 1. And then, of course, if we take 
a to the two-thirds power, we are certainly going to get a to the two-thirds. Now we're going to say, let's let this a become very close to zero. So if that were to happen right here, this guy being close to zero, by the time he's raised to the two-thirds power, he's going to probably get even closer to zero still. Multiplying him by three halves is not going to make much difference. And so basically, this whole thing is going to approach zero. So when all is said and done, this limit is going to be 3 over 2. And because it has a finite answer, we can say that we converge to 3 halves. That's what really the preference is for you to, to write as your final answer. Um, I'm a little lenient with my students, and if you just stop at 3 halves, I will give you full credit. But it's a little bit better off to say that we're converging to 3 halves. This idea of convergence is going to be really, really important as you guys move into Unit 10 later on over the convergence and series tests and so forth. If you want to get a little bit more insight into what we just did, well, it just so happens that I took it upon myself to sketch a graph of 1 over the cube root of x. And if we were to find the area, if we were to find that area between 0 and negative 1, we would be looking at this shape right here. Now, the situation is that all of the area that would lie between this curve and that y-axis is so negligibly small that it's able to be counted. And if we were to count it and add it all up, all of this yellow area would amount to 3 over 2. I hope this video helps. You can see in example 7 below, we're going to take a look at that one next that has a slightly different result. So we hope that you tune in for that one. We'll see you next time.